It really is an incredible pleasure and a distinct honor that I introduce our keynote speaker for the 2024 MDA Clinic, Cult, and Scientific Conference, the remarkable Brooke Eby. Brooke has emerged as a person of enormous influence in the ALS community since her diagnosis at age 33. To many outside our neuromuscular disease community, Brooke represents a daughter, a sister, a best friend, a colleague. She is a young, vital, intelligent, and energetic force. Not someone many would consider likely to receive such a devastating diagnosis. It's with this in mind that Brooke has bravely chosen to use social media and public appearances to ensure that her journey resonates with urgency and purpose and no shortage of humor. With an unparalleled blend of wit and aplomb, Brooke has fearlessly taken on the challenging task of bringing awareness and critically needed funding to ALS research and advocacy. She doesn't sugarcoat the brutality of the disease or the tragedy of being diagnosed as a young person with a full life, a loving circle of friends and family, and a successful career. Yet it is her ability to infuse humor into the narrative that captivates hearts and minds, making the harsh realities of ALS more accessible to a wider audience. Doing so, Brooke is convening a whole new generation to join the fight against this debilitating disease. In her hands, the story of ALS transforms into a call to arms. Through her social posts and media appearances, Brooke is issuing a rallying cry that demands action. And while Brooke's primary focus is on ALS, her message transcends a single disease. Brooke reminds us that the fight against ALS and other neuromuscular diseases requires more than medical advances. Our work to end ALS and other neuromuscular diseases is also contingent on a community united by purpose. Today, we have the privilege of hearing from someone whose courage knows no bounds and whose commitment to making a difference is an inspiration to all of us. Please join me first in, I'm gonna have, we're gonna play a video before I ask Brooke to join us up on stage. So we can, can we play the video first? Let's get ready while I tell you how I got a death sentence before my 30th birthday. At the ripe age of 29, I started noticing some really strange tightness in my calf. And I noticed that I was walking really, really slowly. I did not think much of it because I was 29, so I was like, oh, I must have just like Pilates too close to the sun. But that calf tightness turned into a limp on my left side. And I was living in New York City at the time. It is not a place to walk slowly, so people very quickly started pointing out that I had a limp. So I ran to my sister, who's a doctor, and she had me walk on my heels. As I was walking on my heels, my right foot was able to walk on the heel, my left foot would just slam down into the ground. And that was kind of the kickoff point for a four year run of trying to get a diagnosis. I went to every type of doctor you could imagine. I had every type of test you could imagine. I mean, at one point they brought up polio. Like that's, that's how deep we were going. They brought up ALS about two years into that four year journey, but because it was only affecting one of my limbs at this point, my left foot, it wasn't enough for them to be able to give an ALS diagnosis or even be certain that it was ALS. But then four years into this journey, my right foot started acting up. So that was the point where I was able to get an official diagnosis of ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, also known as the disease that Stephen Hawking had before he became an island boy. So when you get diagnosed, they tell you you have two to five years to live, probably. And there's a couple medications that might slow things down, but they're not totally sure. And that there's no cure. 
and they tell you that you are going to go paralyzed, you're going to lose the ability to move, to talk, to swallow, to breathe, all of it. So that day sucked, and so did the following couple months. I pretty much crawled into bed and ate like a pack of M&Ms a day. And a couple months in, I had a friend's wedding where I was a bridesmaid. I show up to this wedding using a walker in a bridesmaid's dress that's like way too tight because of all the M&Ms. I basically turned to my friend and I was like, let's leave. And she was like, or we can make this really fun. And so like half hour later, we had the bride limboing under my walker and I was giving walker rides all over the dance floor. And that was the point where I was like, okay, we gotta live life in dog years here. Like if I'm being told two to five years, we gotta make every one of those years worth seven. It's kind of like, you know, when you like live in New York City, you never do any of the tourist attractions because you're like, oh, I'll always have time for that. Versus if you go to New York City for one week, you do everything because you're like, I don't know when I'm gonna be back. I feel like that's my life. I'm not sure how much time I'm gonna have, so I'm gonna do it all and have so much fun and act like a tourist of my own life. I'm now 35, so I've had symptoms for six years, diagnosed for almost two years um, with my cute little death sentence, so feel free to ask me any questions below. Love ya! Let's welcome, let's welcome Brooke Eby to the stage. Brooke. I'm glad you all didn't stand. I thought you were going to be showing off. So that is my cute little death sentence that's forced me to live life in dog years. I have to make one equal seven. I move fast and I don't waste a minute. I live at the speed of ALS. Therefore, you need to operate at the speed of ALS because I do not have time. We do not have time. So I'm going to show you how you can move fast and not waste a minute on your way to finding a cure. But first, you might be thinking, hold on, is this that girl on Instagram who gagged on her ALS medication in front of millions on the internet? I hear the whispers. What could I possibly learn from a TikToker who once insinuated that a Kardashian getting ALS would save us all? And it's true. Your 2019 speaker was an MD at the FDA. Your 2022 speaker was a PhD at the MDA. And your 2023 speaker was an MD and a PhD at the FDA. So naturally, this girl is the obvious next choice in line. By the way, this is the first time I ever tried Relivrio, the newest approved ALS medication. I know the Amlex team is here, so please see me after the show. I'm gonna make you take a shot of your own medication. <laughs> it's true, I don't have research experience or medical background, but I am your ultimate stakeholder. I am the person living with the disease that you're trying to end. And according to my friends who still don't really know what I do for a living, I am a businesswoman. So listen up today because I do not have time and my life is in your hands. I'm going to give you a tool today to help you move at the speed of ALS. Now, I'm sure you all went into medicine and thought you'd live life getting to avoid corporate jargon. But to be fair, I thought that going into tech, I'd never have to learn about EMGs or p-values or all these medical things that gross me out. So here I am, fair is fair. So welcome to today's lesson. Please take out your notebooks. When I first started at Salesforce eight years ago, I knew we were the fastest growing software company in the world, but I had no idea how. How does a company with 80,000 employees with extremely difficult goals continue to grow? How do we continue to move fast and not waste a minute? Our answer, is a V2 mom. Has anyone in this room heard that term? You can raise your hand, you can beep your horn, you can shout, do whatever you need to do. I had a feeling it would be a very quiet room. Okay, write down the following letters just like they are on the screen. V, V, M, O, M. This is a methodology that we use at Salesforce that is the foundation and the fuel for Salesforce's growth. It's the way we can operate with speed 
and the way you can operate at the speed of ALS. V2MOM stands for vision, values, methods, obstacles, and measures. It's a way for any organization to stay aligned. So for Salesforce, at the beginning of the year, our CEO writes his V2MOM, then the top line managers write theirs, and then it waterfalls all the way down to individual contributors so that every single person is aligned to the goals. It's kind of like picturing rowers in a crew. We all are responsible for different or, but we're charging towards the same finish line. And every time we, or you, do a V2MOM, you create opportunity. Opportunity to move faster, to excite us about your research, and maybe even accelerate funding. As a fundraiser and advocate myself, I can tell you that a V2MOM moves dollars. I don't care if you're a researcher in a huge organization or a three-person startup, or maybe you're just some individual genius working on a cure to my cute little death sentence. The V2MOM exercise is one worth doing if you want to go faster. So let's get into it. For most of you in this room, your goals are going to change the world. You all save lives and you innovate. Your work is more important than anything in this world, especially in my world. With a goal as big as saving lives and finding a cure, the more crucial it is we break it down into one, what that goal really means, and two, how you'll know you're being successful along the way. So humor me for the next, call it 15 minutes, and let's go through this exercise. We're gonna start with the vision. This is a concise statement that outlines the goal. I want everyone here to close your eyes and picture your vision. I don't wanna see eyeballs. And I know it's early, so don't fall asleep. Okay, picture it on the back of your eyelids. Now open your eyes. My guess is that your vision today sounds something like cure the disease. Good, that is the ultimate vision, that is the end vision. But for today, let's just treat this as a one year exercise. What is your vision for this one year? Here's an example of what a one year vision could be. End ALS through aiming to identify and validate three new therapeutic targets, advancing our understanding of its mechanisms and potential treatment options. By the way, it was really hard for me to not say 30 new therapeutic targets, but I'm trying to speak in your language here. So think through your vision for the next year and write it, write it down. Good, you have the first V down. Now onto values, the guiding principles that govern decision making. Now, I'm sure you have values today beyond the Hippocratic Oath and do no harm, but when I was trying to think of examples, I was like, wash your hands for 30 seconds minimum. Like, they were horrible. So I'll just tell you what I want them to be. What if your values were patient first, speed, and innovation? That means that with every decision you make during the year, you use these values as a lens into your decision making. Let's say you're deciding if you should push for accelerated approval on a drug. Consider the patient first value. Is pushing this doing right by the patient? And let's say two organizations are tackling the exact same project. Think about your value of speed. If you will get to an answer faster by working together and sharing information across the field, then prioritize that. And right now, if you are thinking, Brooke, this only works in the business world, this is not how the science world works, write it down. Write down what won't work and we will get to that in obstacles. Okay, that was the foundation part. On to methods. The specific strategies you use to achieve your vision. After seeing the poster session, I can already admit that your methods are impressively smart and well-researched and largely in a language that I do not understand. So thank you for these methods. But what I want to nail down is that for each method, you have an associated measure, a KPI you can use to track progress. Your methods need to be measurable. You need to be able to look at them quarterly and say, okay, we are 50% to goal here, or we are 0% to goal and we need to reroute. That's fine, fail fast. So let's say your method is conduct studies to test the efficacy and safety of XYZ therapy then your measures are understand the safety profile by Q2, show a higher survival rate by Q4. I know, I know, I see, I see. You're thinking this girl has no idea how long science can take. Stay with me, write it down, hang on until the obstacles. 
Now, I feel like this is a safe space, so I have to admit, I get annoyed when organizations stop at the vision. If you say your vision is to find a cure without any methods or measures of how you plan to show success, this is what you're gonna see from me, ready? That's, that's my side eye. I didn't know how to do that on a stage, but. That is my side eye, that is what you're going to see. If you say, we can't measure KPIs for research because it's more like art, not valued until the artist dies. Remember that we are living in dog years. As a patient, if I hear organization A saying, our goal is to get one drug through preclinical studies this year, our methods for doing that are testing the safety in the first half, efficacy in the second, and we have specific measures we'll use to track our progress. And then organization B comes to me and says, we're trying to find a cure. I'm giving my money to the one using specific measurable goals. Because when you make sweeping statements without the method or the measure, you rob us of hope. And hope is kind of all we have in the face of our cute little death sentences. Hope goes a long way. Is everyone still with me? Okay. Now let's take a look at how you can go fast, or at least faster, live in dog years, and move at the speed of ALS. By the way, I would be naming all of the other diseases that the MDA covers, but most of them do not have acronyms, and I don't want to sound dumb trying to pronounce them all. So we are going with the disease that you're working on right now. Now we move on to obstacles. These are the challenges that might hinder your progress, and here is where I need your help. Think back to everything I've said so far. What feels the most unrealistic to you? Maybe it's the timing. Brooke, testing the safety of a drug will take more than two quarters. That researcher was British. Maybe it's the values. Brooke, researchers don't always want to openly share their work. Maybe it's something else entirely that you heard me say and really struggled not to roll your eyes. But think about what it is and write it down as an obstacle. If you're feeling any resistance, that might just be a hidden obstacle. Grab it, write it down. Then we're gonna break that obstacle down. Let's say it's timing. Testing the safety of a drug takes time. What would help you speed it up? Drill down into your obstacles. In a dream state, the only obstacle for you all would be ALS is a freaking hard problem to solve. But we know there are more obstacles that you all face. Research needs more funding in order to move faster. Research needs more people, which requires funding. Research needs more zebrafish to test on, which requires funding. Write it down. And just so you know, writing it down is not just for you. The obstacles are meant to be shared. This is the way I make choices about what to do with my time and resources. I raise money for ALS. For your research, I am your investor. When organizations come to me and ask me to fundraise for them using my platform, they never come to me with anything like a V2 mom. They come to me with these big pie in the sky statements like, we are so close, Brooke, we are so close. So close to what exactly? I can't help you if I don't know why this or that obstacle exists because I don't know the methods or measures you're working on. People do not give money based on trust. They go on concrete components. So, I have to run. I have more oversharing to do on the internet, but I want to leave you with this. Make your V2 mom. Do it today, even as a thought experiment. You might just put yourself in high gear. And have it on the tip of your tongue. So on the tip of your tongue that if you get stuck in an elevator with me or anyone, you can rattle off your vision, your methods, your measures, all while knowing the obstacles and the values in the back of your head. This is actually a process that I do myself. When someone stops me and says, what's your approach to ALS? I have a clear vision statement of giving a face to ALS in order to drive eyes and money towards solving the problem. My values are authenticity, advocacy, and doing things differently. Also making people laugh, but I felt weird writing, I'm hilarious on a slide. My methods are driving awareness through social media, which I have measures for, video analytics, follower counts, fundraising campaign success, and utilizing my Salesforce network to improve the state of ALS research and patient care, which I have an entirely separate V2 mom for. And
And I'm guessing you all could guess my obstacle. My body is trying to kill me. So will I accomplish this or will the speed of ALS catch up to me before I can accomplish all my goals? So make your V2 mom, make it known, make it public. As I was planning for this keynote, it did cross my mind that every single person in this room might have already had a V2 mom, but how the hell would I know? I internet stalked a number of the organizations in this room, and all of your websites have your mission statement, but it stops there. Do not let it stop there. If your stakeholders, your patients, your investment sources don't know the goals and the measurable plans to get to those goals, then you are missing an opportunity. And we don't have that kind of time. So thank you to the Muscular Dystrophy Association for taking the risk of letting some girl without a bunch of titles after her name speak today. Clearly one of your values is patient first. And to you, thank you all for listening. I want to leave you with one thing, just in case you're a visual learner, an example of what living life in dog years and moving at the speed of ALS looks like. Where's my buddy? <laughs> hey! Just think of it. Development, trial, research, keep going. At. Each sneeze is a different step. Wait, there's a round two, there's a round two. Fail, restart, research, development. Hey buddy, hey buddy. <laughs> Good boy. You think it stopped, right? So thank you all. Now, <laughs> now, of course, you all now think I'm a genius because I'm a businesswoman. But I do have to go back to my social media roots and we're gonna be taking a selfie together. So I have my phone right here, I'm gonna turn around. I'm gonna make it a video actually, so you all can do whatever you want. And I'm just gonna scan it across the room and you guys can surprise me with whatever you wanna do. And welcome to TikTok, people.